Good morning. And we're joined by Caddo Parish Commissioner Mario Chavez. Thanks for joining us on such late notice. Aaron, no problem, and welcome back to Shreveport. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much, Mario. A couple of big items on the uh, commission agenda today's work session. One is the appointment of a new registrar of voters. Ernie Robertson is obviously has decided he's stepping down. The commission has the duty to appoint someone. Uh, we're hearing that Commission President Stormy Gage Watts actually wants the post, but there's a law that prohibits that. Is that accurate? That's what uh, the attorneys are going to look into, and they're going to advise us today on. I asked that same question uh, yesterday, and uh, I was told today when we get to the work session that they're going to go over the laws and stipulations on if we can do that or if we can't. Because I believe you have to sit out two years after serving on the commission, if I'm correct. I may be wrong. I, I'll find out today, and I'll let you know as soon as I know, Aaron. I just know that we were told we need to talk about it at the work session Monday afternoon. What about her even voting on this if she has an interest? Are you concerned about that as well? I am, Aaron. Uh, that that was the first thing that came to mind. It, it just it seems unethical. If it's perfectly legal, that's fine. But um, if that's what I know, Stormy has a big heart for for the voting, for making sure that voting things go very well, well, well ran. Um, so it's not a surprise that she wants that position, but if if ethically she cannot do it, then obviously uh, that'll that'll help all of us in that decision. What's the process for selection, just generally? Well, I've already, believe it or not, about five different people have reached out to me for that job, and I was a little surprised at first when uh, when so many people came out of the woodwork telling me that they wanted that position. Uh, that I did some investigation on on why is this job so important. Or why do they want it so bad? Uh, come to find out, it's, it's a lifetime appointment. Uh, the pay is very good, and the fact that it's a lifetime appointment—that's where I think is the interest of a lot of people. And then some other people that have sent me letters of recommendations for people that have applied and sent me resumes. I realize that some people it's because they do have a heart to serve, and I don't think it's the money or the position that they're looking after. It's that they want somebody responsible in that position because that's very, very important for our community whoever's running the elections it's not an elected post people think it is correct that y'all are just right. appointing till the next election no y'all are appointing for for life for, for life until that person resigns so but it's the integrity important. of the the election process that's so important with that job oh absolutely I, I, i'll tell you what uh every person that has asked me to be on that position or that that appointment i told them hey listen go get me a lot of letters of recommendations because i'm going to want to see if i don't know you I want to see what other people say about you. I think that's paramount. The qualifications, though, people would say, you know, somebody within the office may be better, may may know more about how it's how how you run the office, how you run the operation, um, and that just picking somebody, you know, from the political realm or just general public may not be the way to go. How do you feel Aaron, about that? Well, listen, I, I run a business, and the way that I run my business is I want the best person for the job. Um, I typically don't mind um, a piece of paper saying that they can do the job from a college. I want to know that they've had the on-the-job training, and that all comes back to the military. At the end of the day, if you know somebody can do the job and they can do the job great, I don't care what color they are, what party affiliation, as long as I know they have a lot of integrity and they're a self-starter, they're motivated, and they can do the job. That's the most important thing to me. So I'm going to look at who do I know can get in there day one, running doing the job correctly uh recommendations from ernie would that matter to you absolutely 100 percent. and not to mention somebody that that he likes that could look back to him to say hey listen we're stuck in a rut we can't figure out how to get around this what do you recommend because at the end of the day looking to your mentors looking to the older generation to say hey how do i do this the right way because they've been here a lot longer than us they've their histories of uh, students of history they know the best way to do things. I think somebody that has a good relationship with him would be a great person as well. There's a young lady in his office. I can't call her name, but she seems to be the day-to-day -day person who knows everything when elections, when I, when I go down to vote and other times I've been in the office. That, would she kind of have the inside track, you think? Well, if she's interested, I haven't heard from her yet. So that, that would be uh, probably number seven to add to the list, Dan, mm -hmm. that has reached out to me. Do you all advertise this post? How does that work? It, it definitely has to be advertised. Okay. Um, the duration, I don't know. I'll find out today. Uh, another topic, the Queensboro folks that were impacted by a tornado, gosh, has it been a year? 
It has been. Um, and they still need help. What's the holdup? What's going on with that? Well, Aaron, you know, uh, one of my fellow commissioners, he, he called out one of the commissioners for reporting something to the sheriff, and uh, I'm pretty sure he was referring to me because I, I'm not um, – I'm not worried, and I can go on record to say that I did it. Um, when I see contractors that get their license the day after money gets appropriated, and I see work on a branch that's an inch and a half thick that fell on a roof, and that cost the pair $17,000, and we had to completely redo the entire electrical service because this huge limb fell on the roof, I'm going to scream fraud from the rooftops, and I'm going to want to investigate it. I'm all about helping the citizens of our community. But when the help coming to the citizens of the community means that contractors are doing fraud at the cost of the other taxpayers, somebody needs to get up and say something about it. And I did. And it, if that means that they had to hold the money to make sure that everything was done on the up and up, and, and now we're hearing that the process is harder, I'm fine with that. If the process is harder because the contractors that are now taking advantage of this situation – need to do more to make sure that it's done correctly, I don't think anybody's going to be objective to that. So there's another 150000 that the commission is looking at approving this week? Absolutely. After the original 850, well, let me rephrase it. It was First it was 450 then it was another 450 I think it got dropped down, and I think the total was around 850 to 900 So now there's another hundred. So it's almost tipping a million dollars. And at the end of the day, Aaron, like I said, it, it, sure, it's about helping the citizens, but at the same token, if we were in the situation of, of Shreveport and we mismanaged the money, we didn't have any money around in the bank to, to let the citizens have or to help them out, we wouldn't be in this boat. The fact that the commission has money is why everybody always comes to us to get more money. Gotcha. Caddo Commissioner Mario Chavez, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm.